It's the late 90s. Y2K is coming, MTV is flourishing, and supercars were winning at Le Mans. What would happen if the LaFerrari, the Porsche 918, and the Mercedes-AMG Project 1 all went out and raced each other? Well, if you went back 15 years, you could actually see it. Whoa, 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 whoa. At this point, you probably have two questions. One, how the hell could something that great even come to be? Two, how the hell do we not have it right now? Well, first we have to rewind all the way back to 1996. Ferrari had the F40, Porsche at one point had the 911 GT1, and we all know about the McLaren F1. This series went on for a long time with awesome racing and amazing cars, until 1996 when McLaren ruined the whole Thing. It all started when McLaren decided they wanted to build a supercar. Purely from the technology applied to a road car. Now ironically, the weirdest thing about the McLaren F1 was the fact that McLaren didn't want it to be a race car. They just wanted it to be a cool, fun street car that could beat the speed record and really change what we thought of the street car. But owners thought a little differently. And by a little, I mean they threatened to go racing on their own and have random modders change the car without any of McLaren's help. Just do it! Now McLaren, hearing this, being scared shitless, decided to oblige. What you need me to. And oblige they freaking did. They obliged so hard that it won Le Mans on its first attempt. That just happened. And was entered into GT1. And if it beat all the LMP1s at Le Mans, you can probably guess how well it did in GT1. And then the mother of all pissing matches was on. Starting with a capital P Yorkshire. For the combination of both the insane McLaren F1 and the also very quick Ferrari F40 LM, let's just say a typical 911 wasn't going to cut it anymore. So reminiscent to their Le Mans effort in the 1960s, Porsche decided to build 25 street cars just to get away with the excuse of running it as a GT1. Now in order to do this, they put on a steel front bumper and resurrected their flat six from their old Group C days. All the while only building two of the 25 required cars. And that shit worked. It destroyed the 96 season like Holly Holmes destroyed Ronda freaking Rousey. McLarens and all. And the next year, McLaren freaking responded. Enter the F1 GTR long tail. McLaren went as deep as convincing their sponsor Golf to do a lighter shade of color on the paint as to lighten up the car. And they also did a few other things, like, I don't know, changing the entire damn car. They did everything they could to change body style, cutting 10% of the weight off of the car total. They had BMW cut the engine size from 6.6 .6 to 6 to use bigger air restrictions. And more. And then, everyone else did the exact same thing. Nissan built the famed R390 GT1, both of which streetcars have never escaped the clutches of Nissan ownership. Mercedes' middle finger salute to all of this was the CLK GTR, the only of which actually decided to build all 25 of the recommended streetcars. And then, just as quick as this crazy awesome era of racing started, it died. Costs got too high and cars started to fly, and that seemed to be just about enough to kill one of the greatest series of all time. But then again, I'm an optimist. I mean, who knows? There have been calls to restart GT1 back and forth, and when you see cars like the McLaren P1 GTR and the LaFerrari FXXK seemingly coming out of the woodwork now, who knows? Maybe there will someday be a driving force to start the next generation of GT1. Until then, my name's Nathan Burke, this is Road Rave, and feel free to drop a like and subscribe.